Well, you asked for it and now it's here. ChatGPT is now in Minecraft. These generative agents can completely traverse the world of Minecraft, mine, build, explore, and it's absolutely incredible. A new paper called Voyager shows what is possible with their new techniques. I'm gonna review it with you. We're gonna look at some examples and your mind is gonna be blown. Let's go. This paper promises a technique where LLM powered agents can continuously learn through the life of their experience in a Minecraft world, explore the world, acquire diverse skills, and make novel discoveries with zero human intervention. And their innovative technique consists of three main pillars. First, an automatic curriculum. They use GPT-4 and the internet scale of knowledge contained within GPT-4 to provide an automatic curriculum, basically a set of tasks that they need to accomplish over the life of this agent. So where did it get all this knowledge from? Minecraft has more than 100 million active players who have collectively generated an enormous wealth of data. They use 730,000 YouTube videos with 2.2 billion words of English transcripts, 7,000 Wikipedia pages, and 340,000 Reddit posts with 6.6 .6 million comments. So there's so much information already out there that GPT-4 is trained on about Minecraft. Next is a skill library. They prompt ChatGPT-4 to give them not only a description of the different types of skills that are possible, like mining, building, crafting items, but also the code necessary to actually execute these tasks within the simulated Minecraft environment. Next is their iterative prompting mechanism. And they really took a page out of AutoGPT here where they're prompting ChatGPT to give them the description of these skills that are necessary and the code that is necessary. They execute the code and if there are any errors, they iteratively pass that back to ChatGPT until it gets it right. And they're doing this through self-verification. So ChatGPT is checking its own work. Very similar to how AutoGPT works, where it not only provides the task to complete, but also a critique of the task. Basically, things that could potentially go wrong while executing that task. Let's take a look at what the prompt actually looks like for this automatic curriculum. First, they include directives encouraging diverse behaviors and imposing constraints. Your ultimate goal is to discover as many diverse things as possible. The next task should not be too hard since I may not have the necessary resources or have learned enough skills to complete it yet. They also include the agent's current state. So they provide provided the inventory, equipment, what's nearby, if there's any uh, enemies nearby, time, health, hunger bars, position. They also provide any previously completed and failed tasks. So this is part of the iterative process. They want it to know what has worked and what hasn't worked. And then additional context. We also leverage GPT 3.5 to self ask questions based on the agent's current state and exploration progress and self answer questions with a wiki knowledge base to provide additional context to GPT 4. Next is the skill library. And this is probably the coolest part to me. With automatic curriculum consistently proposing increasingly complex tasks, it is essential to have a skill library that serves as a basis for learning and evolution. So basically, as they learn new skills, they're actually storing these skills and they're using a vector database to do so. So they create an embedding based on the description of a skill. So let's say for example, the skill is to build a house. They create an embedding description of that. Then they also have the actual code to execute building a house. This is created by GPT-4 and stored as the value to the key, which is the description of that skill. So by using a vector database, we can ask questions like, if I needed to build a house, how would I do it? They have the skill, they look it up in the vector database they pull the code and then they can execute it. And as they do that, as they successfully execute those skills, they build up a repertoire of skills that they can perform going forward in the game. Now, as mentioned, they do self-reflection on the executed skills. So they give it up to four chances. They go, they execute a skill, and if it fails, they take the error, they pass it back into GPT-4, they try it again, and continue on that iterative process. So let's talk about the iterative prompting mechanism now. This is really the crux of the innovation of this paper. We introduce an iterative prompting mechanism for self-improvement through three types of feedback environment feedback. So for example, I cannot make an iron chest plate because I need seven more iron ingots. They also provide it back with execution errors. So with that error, which is I cannot make this iron chest plate, they provide that back into ChatGPT and ChatGPT knows now, okay, I can't do that. And then they also do self-verification. Instead of manually coding success checkers for each new task, 
proposed by the automatic curriculum, we instantiate another GPT-4 agent for self-verification. So it is verifying its own code. So here's an example. So on the left, we have examples of prompts that can be passed into GPT-4. So here's the inventory. Here's the task that we want to execute. We pass it to GPT-4 and the success is true. Mining coal ore in Minecraft will get coal. You have five coal in your inventory. Now let's look at a failure case. So we pass the inventory in and we say craft a spyglass. The success is false, so it failed. To craft a spyglass, you need two copper ingots, one amethyst shard, and you have three copper ingots, but you don't have any amethyst shards. So the critique, very similar to how AutoGPT works, is find and mine an amethyst shard underground. And again, they do this over four rounds. If the agent gets stuck after four rounds of code generation, then we query the curriculum for another task. And they compared Voyager to a few different baselines of existing technologies out there. One is React, which uses chain of thought prompting. And next is Reflection, which is built on top of React, but actually uses multiple agents for self-reflection. And then we have AutoGPT. So let's look at the performance now. Voyager has outperformed AutoGPT reflection and React quite significantly. Here's an example first of Voyager being able to traverse a map at a much higher rate. Basically, the other methods, React, Reflection, and AutoGPT, got stuck in a very small portion of the map, whereas Voyager was able to explore a large section of the map. Voyager was able to traverse 2.3 times longer distances as compared to those baselines. And not only were they able to explore more of the map, but they were actually able to explore and learn new things much more quickly. So Voyager's superiority is evident in its ability to consistently make new strides, discovering 63 unique items within 160 prompting iterations, 3.3 times as many novel items compared to its counterparts. But it also mastered its tech tree more consistently. Compared with baselines, Voyager unlocks the wooden level at 15.3 times faster, the stone level at 8.5 times faster, and the iron level at 6.4 times faster. And it's the only one to have unlocked the diamond level of the tech tree. Last, let's talk about some of the limitations. One is cost. Very similar to that paper I reviewed about autonomous agents, GPT-4's API calls are quite expensive, and it does take a lot of GPT-4 API calls to do this. Next is inaccuracies. Even though they have the iterative prompting mechanism, they still get things wrong sometimes. Times, they get stuck and they fail to generate the correct skill. The last limitation is hallucinations and it occasionally proposes unachievable tasks, for example. So it might ask the agent to craft a copper sword or a copper chest plate, which are items that just don't exist in the game. And it might also call functions that don't exist in the simulated environment. So it'll lead to code execution errors. Now, a few weeks ago, I made a video about a paper about autonomous agents, and I found that paper incredibly interesting. And this paper really takes it to the next level by actually getting something in a real game that people can use today. And yes, the code is available, you can use it right now. I am so excited about the future of video games. This is just another example of the worlds of artificial intelligence and video games coming and crashing together. I cannot wait to see fully autonomous agents that are built natively into these games. I'm going to drop links in the description below to the paper, the videos, and the game environment. Please check it out. And if you like this video, please consider giving me a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.